everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Gonna wait a little bit here, see if we can get some more people on. I'm a little late, so that's my fault. But today's a good subject. Um, we're gonna talk about homestead safety. Good morning, Chad. And uh, <laughs> good morning. And uh, we're gonna talk about gun safety, uh, holsters, and and uh, carrying a firearm. Um, that's something that I feel is really important, um, especially in our neck of the woods, and it's just our personal preference to uh, be able to practice our Second Amendment rights. So um, I'll let a bunch of you guys get on here before I start rattling on. How you doing today, Chad? And those of you that are out there joining me, good morning, Tammy, from uh, YouTube and Patreon. Uh, if you missed the live show, I do it every Wednesday at 1030. Today I'm a little late, forgive me, um, but it's, it's the average time is 1030. Uh, occasionally I'll have either health issues or um, electronic issues of sorts, technology issues. Um, so... Feel free to jump on and join me live. I may try to do these on Patreon also periodically. Um, we'll just have to see how things go. It's been a little wild and wooly here. Um, but I'm glad to see you guys joining me. Today's a good topic. How many of you guys actually um, own firearms and carry uh, and practice your Second Amendment rights? We do here. We have previously. Um, it's just... Where I lived on the farm, uh, before I met the mountain man, I was running my bird dog in the mountains on quail and grouse and pheasant. And there were mountain lions there. We had a couple spottings and I was running with the mountain boy. Um, so I didn't feel comfortable being out there and carrying a shotgun. Um, I was training my dog. I wasn't shooting. Um, I was just training him so I had a blank gun. Um, so that wouldn't have done me any good. You know, there was also bears, so I didn't feel it was right uh, for me as a mother to be out there in the woods and not be able to protect myself and my son. So that's when I purchased my 357. That is a great outdoors gun. Um, I also enjoy carrying uh, the Mountain Man's 44. Being able to protect yourself from bigger prey is important. You don't want to piss off a bear by shooting him with something that's just going to deflect off of him and just make him mad. So you need to have, you know, be certain that the firearms you are carrying are things that are going to, to protect you in the environment that you're in. We have them. Some of our family plan to carry soon. Yeah, um... We're very fortunate in Idaho um, with the gun laws. I know in other states, good deal, Chad. Um, in other states, you know, um, and even other countries, I know Australia and uh, Canada um, are not able to carry um, Australia for certain. Um, so, and transporting guns, you know, can be from state to state can be um, sketchy too. So it's important that you know everybody's laws from state to state. Good morning, George. But I just feel it's really important, um, and it's, it's our right to carry, and I think that it's important for people to be educated. One of the very first things I'm going to express today is that I feel that if somebody is new to firearms, the very first thing they need to do is uh, do a uh, firearm safety class and also learn how to maneuver a gun. I had somebody come up to me a couple weeks ago. They were really interested in the holster that I had. Um, it was the one the mountain man made for me and he was all excited and wanted to know how I draw my gun. So he proceeded to draw his and was pointing it right at me. Um, that's a good way to get yourself shot. That's not um, good etiquette with a firearm. And granted, he was excited and he just wanted information. I knew that he did not have good etiquette and that he did not have good um, background on firearms. So it's very important. You know, everybody says that um, guns kill people. 
I don't agree with that. I believe that um, deranged people shoot people. You know, the circumstances where those are, those comments are made are when there are people that are sick and that needed help and, and are shooting people. Guns don't shoot people. Um, it's ignorant people you know, that do that. So it's really important that you as an individual wanting to carry knows how to handle your gun, how to shoot your gun, etiquette with your gun, gun safety, and, and also cleaning your guns, you know, knowing how your guns come apart, knowing how to take care of them. All that stuff is super important. And if you don't have people in your life to, um, educate you and teach you on that. Um, there's some great, great places out there today that will take you under their wing. Um, a lot of the gun stores have shooting ranges and things available to you. Uh, a girl and a gun org is available to you ladies to be able to go and learn how to comfortably and in a comfortable setting, learn how to use a firearm and the safety behind it. So, you're going to have to do your due diligence in your area to find out what is available to you. Um, it's always great when you can have somebody that's been um, using guns and hunting to be able to educate you also. But it's really important that you know this. You know, good gun etiquette is the very first thing that should take place and, and uh, gun safety, without a doubt. Um, the Mountain Boy, as you all know, is high-functioning autistic, and he has been um, hunting with me since he could. I've, he was out with me at five and seven, out behind me hunting. He couldn't hunt at the time, but he was with me and learning the, the process. And, and then when he was introduced to guns, he was introduced to guns and the safety of guns before he was introduced to shooting the gun. So, you know, it's a process and you've got to really educate um, your, your, your children if you want them to be able to go hunting. Safety is the most important thing. Guns are not toys and they do need to be respected. And I can't say that enough because people make really bad mistakes because they don't understand. And that's why that is the first thing I'm going to say. Christine Stevens, is your mountain man going to be making holsters now? Yes, Christine. Um, we are hoping to embark on that this um, fall and winter. Um, forgive me. I'm not stripping down here, but my holster's on my hip, and I want to take it off my belt. This is one of the mountain man's holsters that he's made. Um, it started out as light, lighter leather. Um, lighter in color. He does treat them. I'll show you here. This one looks more fresh off the presses, if you will. Um, but he does a really, really nice job. And ladies, um, one of the reasons I wanted to talk holsters today was because finding the right holster is really, really important because for the first four years here, my hips would get so sore because I was carrying this thing around. This is heavy. Um, it's a great gun. I love it, but it's heavy. And I was carrying it in an Uncle Mike's holster. And that's um, not that Uncle Mike's is bad. Um, Uncle Mike's is a great holster for a guy. They're really, they're big and they're bulky and that would be okay, but they don't sit tight against a woman. So they're clanging around. And so my hips would just get so sore carrying that. And this is something that I need to be carrying with me when I'm out with my dog's because it's higher powered than the other and um, it's best for my safety and their safety. Thanks, Mark. Um, so it's important that you find holsters that work. So I was gonna, I'm gonna start off with homestead guns and then we'll come back to the different holsters because I have quite a few here that I'd like to share with you. Um, but as far as a homestead gun, and again, excuse me, <laughs> I'm rebuckling my belt here in the way. Um, as far as homestead guns, um, for those of you that are new to homesteading, um, you are going to have predators come in. Um, we lost, we have a wonderful little mama chicken. She was a little thing, but she was gutsy as all get out. I've never seen such a protective mama chicken. She was amazing. She had, I think she had nine peeps last year and this year she had 11. We are down to six and she um, would, was refusing to go in the coop 
with the other chickens, with her young. Um, chickens can be funny, and they protect their young very heavily. She was very protective, and something got her during the night, whether it was a raccoon or an owl or I'm not sure what, but something got her during the night. But we've also had coyotes come in during the day and have shot at them. And this is the perfect gun, I feel, for the homestead and also for um, your hiking and, and survival. This has a hollow stock. This is a Rossi trifecta. And when purchased, comes with three barrels. It comes with the 22 that I have on there. It also comes with a 243, which is a rifle barrel, and um, a 20 gauge, which is your shotgun. So it's very universal. This is a kid's gun. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm short. I've got short arms. And this baby pulls up really nice when you're wanting to shoot grouse and, and quail and, and birds. It's just a great and easy gun to carry. It's lightweight. So when you've got this on your pack, it's not near as heavy. Um, but this is a great gun to start with for a homestead purpose because you've got three different gauges to work with. You've got your 22, which is your varmint gun pretty much. You could also use a 20 gauge for that as well. Um, the 243 is a great deer gun. Uh, we've killed many deer with the 243. And um, the 20 gauge is great for turkey and uh, quail, grouse, pheasant, ducks, your birds, your game birds. So it's a great, um, a great universal gun. And like I said, this stock is hollow, so the end can be removed. And in all of our guns, we have our fire starting equipment, extra knives, different things. So it does make it a little heavier, but it also makes this something that I can just take with me and know that I have everything I need back here. So this is a really great gun. The Mountain Boy made us... Um, Oh my goodness, totally went blank. Help me here. <laughs> a, uh, it's not a harness. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. One of these. I just totally went blank. But he, he makes these on, on his website and on ours. Uh, these are paracord and nylon, which makes it really great. The paracord on here can be taken off of here and utilized for other uh, survival um situations, creating your own shelter using this, um, making whatever you need in the wilds. Had a Thompson contender when I was young. Loved the gun. Awesome. Sling. Thank you, Mark. Brain fart. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's one of those mornings. I'm not, I woke up not feeling so good, so the brain's not all there. So Mark, thank you. All right. So, um, these are easy to carry. Great gun, little gun. It comes apart, um, very simply. Um, You can change your, your barrels by simply just unscrewing the uh, attachment for the sling. This piece was removed, and then you can slip in the other barrel. Um, like I said, really great gun, really great for children. This is a great gun to start your children on, but it's a great homestead gun. The three of us each have one um, and, and utilize this all the time just because of it being small and easy to maneuver with, um, especially in the thick woods that we're in a lot of the time. So uh, this is a great gun. Um, the only disadvantage to this gun is it's a single shot with all three barrels. So sometimes, um, depending what you're shooting, it's nice to have a semi. Um, I have my Remington um, 1187, and um, that's a 12 gauge. And that is an awesome gun, too. Really, really like that gun. Um, a 30 6 is a semi, can be a semi-automatic. And um, those are, uh, or, I'm sorry, that's a bolt action. Um, but the 30 6 is a good rifle, an all-around rifle for the homestead. Um, your elk, deer, mule deer, um, moose, it's, it's equipped and, and powerful enough for you f and recommended. The 12-gauge, I would recommend a 12-gauge on the homestead because um, the 20 is strong. If you had a 3-inch mag in here, um, yeah. I do too, Jason. Jason said he likes the Remington 1100. Um, a three-inch mag in a 20 gauge with a bear would deter a bear, but I don't like taking chances. So a 12 gauge uh, would give you a little bit more oomph there uh, to deter a um, a bear. 
Now, two-legged predators breaking in your house, a shotgun is a great, a great tool. You cover more area with that and uh, would quickly deter your, your two-legged predators too. So 20 or a 12 um, buckshot sends people running. So that's what I recommend there. Um, I just I just feel that if you're starting out, a gun like that would give you the opportunity to get started and not just have one gauge but multiple gauges on your homestead. Another really great survival gun is the Badger. It is it it comes completely apart. It's two pieces, and um, that's a 22. And they do have other gauges for that as well. But that's a great, great gun. Much more lightweight than this. Um, if you're just looking for a 22, um, we talked about use, utilizing those on a pack trip. Um, we were hoping to do a pack trip. Uh, probably, I guess it was two years ago, and then I got sick. So that's still on the agenda. But if when you're backpacking and you're going long distances and you're, um, you know, partially living off the land but also living off food in your pack, you're going to want to use freeze-dried food because it's lightweight, but you also don't want to be carrying heavy guns, too, for a long period of time. So the Badger, I think, is a great gun for those purposes. Um, but thanks for sharing your thoughts, too. The uh, Remington 1100 is a good gun. And um, I don't know if you guys all hunt or not, but I absolutely love hunting elk and I love hunting turkey because they are so interactive. And that just makes the, the, the hunt really exciting and thrilling. Um, but I also love hunting birds. Uh, grouse is a great hors d'oeuvre, hortivore, if you will. Um, and I, we love doing our, our grouse hunts, too. So grouse and wild game birds and wild game is amazing meat if it's cooked right. If not cooked right, it's nasty. And many people have experienced that where they cook it and it gets like a hockey puck and, and then it tastes gamey and nasty. Where if you cook your game meats um, on low heat for a long period of time... They are absolutely amazing if you cook your um, like steaks or um, the grouse and you, you just uh, did that real nice and easy in a frying pan, not overdoing it. It's just, it's beyond amazing. So when we typically go out with our packs and we're hunting like that and, and living off the land a little bit, um, we'll take a little thing of either coconut oil or olive oil and our seasoned salt and garlic in our packs, and that's all we take with us. So um, game meat is really amazing, and you will not find a more wholesome meat out there. I, I, I don't buy meat in the grocery store. I do buy meats from the um, health food store, but still you're not going to find a better tasting meat than your wild game meats, in my opinion, and, and healthier. So um, those are my thoughts. Uh, and if you are new to hunting, um, every state, the fish and game typically has a, uh, a training every year, uh, their, their uh, hunter safety classes, and they're for all ages. So if you're interested in getting involved in hunting, if you don't have somebody, um, I highly recommend that. It's, it's definitely going to get you off on the right foot. Christine says, I have a 22 Ruger single shot for hiking. I live in the Olympics. My problem is my high-waisted and holsters dig into my rib cage, so need something to sit lower on the hip. My favorite is the Winchester 3030, but I don't think they have a holster for that. <laughs> no. This is one of the ones that sits higher. This thing used to dig either into my groin, depending on the holster, or up into my ribs. But this actually holsters it really nice that it is just right against me, but not digging in my ribs. So I understand what you're saying. It's really hard to find the right holsters. Um, there have been some nice shoulder holsters that I have considered. I have not tried them. Um, I always carry a front pack, the Alaska Guide Creations front pack, because then everything I need is right there at my fingertips, but nothing's in my hands. So my hands are always free, my gun is holstered, so everything's accessible, and and I can get it on the ready. So I don't know that a, a shoulder holster and a cross holster would work real well with the setup that I typically carry, but that's another option too. 
um, we do do that with the 44 um, on occasion. So, And the 44 is heavy, but I really feel comfortable carrying that, and sometimes I'll hunt with that. That's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so I have some other holsters here. Now, guys, I don't have any holsters to show you, but I have mentions. In the descriptions below are some of the holsters we have used. Um, Uncle Mike makes nice holsters. There's a lot of Kydex holsters out of there, uh, out on the market. Um, but I did have the opportunity to review the Klinger holster, and I really do like this. Um, lightweight, these Kydex holsters are really sweet holsters. Um, and are really versatile, actually. I like them because it covers the trigger guard completely. So, like... I see a lot of women carrying their, their guns in their purses. I, I, I kind of frown upon that. I know they make the holsters or, or the guns with the special pockets and everything, but I know what your purses look like. And if you're not carrying it in one with a pocket, you're digging for it. And if you ever need it, I don't want to be a victim. And that's why I carry. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I am watching people die and I know that I could have changed things. So that's why I carry. And I, I want to protect myself and my family. So I don't want to have to be fishing for this thing. I don't want to have to be digging for it. And I see people put these in their bags and the, and the triggers are not protected. Um, bad things happen that way. So... I like this because if I do feel like shoving it in a bag, I do go to church on Sunday. I don't always have my boots on because um, I have another holster. It's also Kydex. This is made by Flashbang Holsters, and I like this because it has the metal clip. This one fits on my boot, on my cowboy boot, really nice. So when I'm wearing a dress and I got this stuck in and my boots on, I can stick that in there and totally conceal this. Don't have to dig for it. Um, and when we're in different places, I will use this holster. So I'm, I actually carry a backpack with me with all of my writing and, and my equipment with me and, um, my supplements and different things. So I have my holster on my hip, but I carry one of these two with me or both all the time if I need to switch up. And I know that sounds crazy, but there are certain situations where I may not want to go into a situation and have it open and be open carrying. Um, granted, it's in front of me, um, but those are just my thoughts. So Sundays, I'll either use one of these two holsters. One will be in my bag. The other will be on my boot. Now, I'm going to show something to you, and I did notice that they have redesigned it. Um, this is the Flashbang holster, and good morning, Vicki Lynn. What do you think of the chest holsters? The chest holsters are nice. Um, I, one of our friends utilizes a chest holster with his 44. Um, I haven't carried them, but he really likes it. Um, for a man, I think it would be much more comfortable than for a woman. Um, but like I said, I would like to try that um, and see if I can find one that is suited for me. Um, but it's nice. It's nice and it's also convenient. You got your hands free. It's close. It's you know. So I I would recommend them um, for you guys. Um, you ladies, we're going to have to experiment on that and see if we can find them that are comfortable. But this one here is the Klinger holster. And you can find the link for them down below. Um, I really like this. Um, it's just, it has a heavier duty feel to the Kydex than the Flashbang holster does. Um, the Kydex is thicker. And I really like that these are made in the U.S. Um, so I, I just got this about a year ago. I have been using this for about four years. So it's, it's held up well. It looks great. Um, you know, so, and I do take care of my stuff, but still, it's clanging around, banging into stuff. It's in my boot. So I, both are great. Kydex is durable. One of the things that I was going to show you today is that I didn't like this one because it only had the one screw where this has the two. I don't have to worry about this sliding into my pants, which does happen. That's why I started using it in my boot. But I did notice that Flashbang now has another screw up higher, and they've changed the way they are they are uh, attaching this. So they have made the correction to their um, holsters. So that is a plus. And I, I do highly recommend the Flashbang holsters for you ladies. Now, this one here is, the one I'm using is the Betty. This is the Betty. Now, the Marilyn is the original Flashbang holster. 
and it it is a bra holster. That's exactly why it's called Flash Bang. Um, but this gets it's the same basic concept, only it gets attached to the bra. And no, I'm not going to demonstrate that. But there is a video link down below that will show you how to utilize it and and how it how it works. That even um, you ladies with the smallest chest out there, this can still be concealed and so can your gun. It's really kind of crazy. So check it out. Um, it doesn't matter your size. It can be concealed. So, um, and that one is the Maryland. And then we also have the Ava by Flashbang. And this is the back holster. So this goes in the back of your pants, attaches on so that you can conceal and back carry. Now, I don't, I don't like carrying, uh, back carrying and holstering in the back because, um, I feel that you're at a disadvantage that if there's somebody that does happen to see that it's there and they get it before you do, um, you're in trouble. And, um, open carrying, um, can be, can go either way. It depends on the situation that I'm in and, and the environment that I'm in. But um, sometimes you don't want people to know that you're, you're carrying. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I think that it's important that you always consider your surroundings and, um, and just handle yourself accordingly. Um, something else I wanted to mention too with the flashbang. They make belts. Um, and I've been wearing their belt for the last four or five years. And I really, their belts are extremely durable. They're nice looking, but they're really thick and they're and they're very durable. Nice heavy duty leather, um, and they're lined just like the Ava was. So good morning, Tiffany. So I just wanted to mention that because sometimes it's hard to find a good belt. I, I've struggled with that, and I've struggled with finding a belt that fits through my holsters properly. And um, so I wanted to just mention that. And they. The flashbang holsters do actually have holsters for you guys too. Um, it's they've used uh, different names. Let me see if I can open it up while I'm quickly on here with you guys. Um, do any of you guys use other holsters um, that you would recommend? Um, the Elliot Ness and the Capone holster. They use. Uh, actors names on a lot of these there's another one too I thought but they do they do have um, men's items as well but I do recommend their their items there are also some holsters out there that are um, like a garter type uh, holster for you ladies that wear dresses and um, I haven't tried those I would like to um, just for like like I said Sundays um, I don't too often wear a dress just because I'm running through the woods I'm full of tree sap dresses are just kind of not convenient here on the homestead but when I go to church I, I do wear my dresses and stuff so it's nice to have that um, leg holster they also make a lot of leg holsters for men too to conceal uh, for those of you that are jogging and and out act you know doing activities riding bike and things you know I would I don't do anything without my my pistol and I know that sounds crazy but I I don't um, I, I want to be protected, and um, like I said, I just don't want to be a victim. I want to be able to help others if I can, and that's just kind of how I roll. But when I'm out, if I can't pack it on my, on my body, I'll put a fanny pack on or something on that I can carry it with me. Um, so those that, that is what I carry. That is what I use. And um, again, I'll show you the Mountain Man's holsters. He also um, does some engraving and puts his brand on them as well. I don't know if you can see it. The lighting's kind of bad. But his custom holsters are really nice, really snug fitting, and very durable too. So we will be releasing these and um, getting things rolling with that upcoming. He's been making some locally, but we've had to put things into place to be able to make these globally because of the guns and the patterns and different things. So stay tuned for that. Um, he definitely does really great leather work. He did um, 
an axe holster as well um, as the sheath for the holster uh, for the axe so um, and does sheaths for for saws and and knives as well so we have a lot of things that he he does but we haven't released them yet because of the chaos of our situation and um our summer's been very busy we've been very blessed with a lot of work which is helping us to get to feel like we can breathe again anyway so god has greatly blessed us there so taking on this would just add more stress to us right now but that's why during the winter months we're going to open this up and and start taking orders that way he can um address those and and not be in a panic with everything else that we have going on so um do you guys have anything to add? I want to just check my notes too because I wanted to make sure to tell you guys about some of the little things that I know of. The girl in the gun org. I highly recommend to you ladies. Uh, I know. showed you was a 357 the larger one the smaller one is a Caltech P3AT it's a 380 have a great day and God bless keep up the great information and fighting the good fight thank you Mark I really appreciate that thank you thanks for joining <laughs> it's always good to have you guys on here with me and to be able to communicate because otherwise when we're doing videos we're talking to screens all the time and it's just so nice to get to know you to hear your feedback and um, and also to learn from you guys. You guys share a lot of great stuff too. Yeah, so I think I shared everything. Um, ladies, um, if you're looking for good carry guns, you know, most of us have small hands. Um, when I had my, my Harley, I had to have special grips put on it because I couldn't use the standard ones because I couldn't get my hands around them. So, you know, we have small hands, some of us. So the kel 380 is a great um, gun. Uh, the Glock 43 is another one that is a good gun for women. Um, also, either one, men or women, good morning, Sharon. I wanted to mention that it's really important that you find a gun that works good for you. So go somewhere where you are able to shoot the guns and try the guns out to make sure they're a good suit for you because... Um, they're a good chunk of change, and you want to make sure that what you are carrying, you are you can be effective with, and that you can shoot a good pattern with them. And valid um, thrive life is on there that is the freeze-dried foods that we use when we are out um, backpacking and and living off the land and hiking and also what we use in our home for our meals uh, it's part of our food cache and um, the complete guide to pressure canning is the book I gave away last week you can find that by going to tryerwilderness.com slash pressure canning. That is a great book. It is the soup to nuts completely of just pressure canning. And it not only just has you pressure canning your individual vegetables, but she has fantastic and phenomenal recipes for meals in a jar. And, and I'm talking like chicken cacciatore, not just like chili. It's amazing. So you have to check that out. But check out the links below. A lot of useful links. And um, I really appreciate you guys joining me. I just wanted to read one thing. This is to send you guys off. Uh, number 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Those are my thoughts for you today. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you all. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for these people that have taken the time out of their busy days to join me for sharing their input and, and being a light as well. 
Lord, I just ask that you wrap your hands of protection on them, uh, heal those that are in need, bless those that are in need, and just uh, show them your presence. And Lord, just thank you for all that you do, but better yet, what you're going to do in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Smith & Wesson Bodyguard Hammerless 38 is great for women and also their 380. Yeah, very true. Um, and this... It's definitely important to shop around because there are a lot of guns out there and there are a lot of good guns out there. And it's just important to find what works for you. Uh, and depending on your situation too, where you're packing, like I said, I'm out here in the wild. My 380 is great when I'm, when I'm traveling in town and different things, but I don't really feel comfortable carrying that out here. I've got mountain lions, bears, wolves, mama moose. So it's important for me to carry something that's going to pack a punch. And my 357 is a great gun, and the 44 is even a step above that. So knowing, knowing what, you're, what you're protecting yourself from and, and what you're looking for, too. Good universal guns um, that will pack the punch uh, so that you're getting your money's worth with what you're purchasing. Um, so guys, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about next week. I haven't decided that yet. God kind of implants that information as my weeks progress and as things go on, but join me next week. Um, I do have a bunch of things that I'm going to be giving away upcoming and I'm not sure how and when I'm going to be doing that. So stay tuned and thank you all again for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I wish you guys a really good week. And if you have further questions, leave them in the comments below if you're watching this afterwards. Uh, if you have input, leave them in the comments below. I'm constantly checking my messages. And look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care and God bless.